guys, uh, regarding the CAPS exam pattern, so I will briefly explain you about how the exam pattern it would be and uh, how the scoring uh, it will be, okay? So I would like to share you a slide. Thank you. So the CAPS is nothing but is the knowledge assessment of pharmaceutical sciences where uh, the examiner or um, the APC uh, which conducts the exam. So they just want to assess the basic knowledge of the candidates, whether you have the appropriate knowledge to um, knowledge regarding the medications and knowledge on the therapeutics or knowledge on uh, pharmaceutical calculations and also uh, they assess your application skills okay so you should have the basic knowledge as well as you should have the basic skills to apply your knowledge like they also give you some case scenarios that is the case studies and they will assess that uh, how you can apply your knowledge and all the questions like the in caps examination direct that is the straightforward questions you can expect around 30 percent but 70 percent of the questions will be application based questions okay so that is uh straight away they don't they won't ask the uh, side effect or uh, what is the mechanism of action of the drug but they will ask they will try to um, check your knowledge as well as the your application skills okay so here in the caps examination you will be having two papers that is the paper one and paper two so both the papers will be held on the same day okay so that is on the same day you will be having both the papers that in the morning you will be having paper one okay and after finishing the paper one you will be having one hour gap so one hour break and after one hour, you will be doing the paper two. Okay, so both the papers will be held on the same day, and both the papers they contain hundred MCQs. Okay? So hundred MCQs in paper one and hundred MCQs in paper two. Okay, and in order to uh, pass overall, the pass percentage is fifty percent. Okay, but the condition is you need to pass individual papers that is you need to pass paper one as well as paper two okay and in each paper further they will divide or further they have different domains okay so i will go uh, in brief about uh, how they uh, break or how they break the subjects or how the domains in each paper are categorized so in the first paper that is the paper one the three main or the main core subjects in paper one are chemistry there is the pharmaceutical chemistry physiology and pharmacology so chemistry the first part it carries around 30 percent weightage okay 30 percent of weightage will be for chemistry that is for pharmaceutical chemistry and the rest that is uh, 70 percent of weightage will be for physiology and pharmacology okay so even uh, out of 70 percent in physiology just they will ask uh, around 10 percent of questions from physiology and the rest of them everything will be from pharmacology okay so 30 percent roughly around 30 percent from chemistry and 70 percent from these two components okay and chemistry will be the first main uh, part like in paper one the first questions that you get uh, when you start doing your paper one will be the chemistry based questions and roughly around 20 25 or up to 30 questions you can expect from chemistry so again here chemistry means they won't ask from the core chemistry that is it means that they won't ask completely from the uh, structures or come or they won't ask much about the structure activity relationship okay or they won't ask about any of the synthesis part okay? so based on the structure like uh, related to the structure of the drugs so you can expect only four or five questions okay like they will uh, give you the basic structure of the phenytoin and they will ask you uh, the below structure what is the mechanism of action of the drug represented by the below structure or what is the main uh, side effect of a drug which is represented by the below structure or they will ask like they will give you the structures of the amoxicillin okay the different type of the penicillin so 
uh, they, they may give you the structure of the amoxicillin and they will ask you to identify what type of penicillin it is. Okay, so whether it is a phenoxymethyl penicillin or an amino penicillin, because amoxicillin is a type of amino penicillin. Okay, so in such a way, they will give you the basic structure of the drug and they will ask you to identify the drug or they will ask you to identify the use or the side effect of the drug. Okay, so in the lectures, we will go through all the uh, chemistry. In the chemistry, uh, when I teach you the chemistry part, so during uh, that time, I will explain you all uh, in detail about it, okay? And the rest of the chemistry, so most of the times they will ask you about um, the application type, okay? Like they will give you the pH value of the drug and they will uh, ask you in, and also they will give you the pKa value of the medium and they will ask you that what happens to the drug when that drug is placed in a, pKa in a uh, medium that has got the pKa value of so and so. Okay, so in such a way, most of the application type of the uh, parts will be asked in chemistry. Okay, and the next part is the physiology. So, like again, in chemistry, so from the organic chemistry, they will ask you the basic structures of the amines, amide. Okay, uh, structure of the indole, quinolone, or any type of the structure. They will give you a structure and they will ask you to identify what uh, compound it is. Okay. And from the medicinal chemistry, they will give you the structure of either the penicillin, cephalosporin, or any of the drugs like tricyclic antidepressants okay, uh, or a phenytoin. And they will ask you to identify uh, what is uh, its use or what side, what is the common side effect of the drug. Okay. And sometimes they may ask you uh, one or two questions on the structure activity relationship, okay? And uh, in chemistry, they also ask you uh, about the drug metabolism, the phase one and phase two uh, drug metabolism. And this part, that is the drug metabolism, it comes in chemistry as well as in biopharmaceutics, okay? So they may ask you in chemistry part or they may ask you in biopharmaceutics as well, okay? So biopharmaceutics is, uh, the part that it covers in paper two and it is the major it plays a major role in uh, pharmaceutics part of the paper two okay that we will see in the next or the upcoming slides and the next one is the stereochemistry stereochemistry is the important one so you can expect around two or three questions from the stereochemistry that is they ask you the questions on isomers geometrical isomers enantiomers and so on and some other minor topics like esterification, what is polymerization, what is saponification. Okay, so all this part it comes under chemistry. Okay, so as I told you uh, at the beginning uh, itself, guys, like the direct structure, you won't uh, get much of the questions. Like hardly three or four or up to five questions you will uh, get based on the direct medicinal chemistry that is the structure related questions okay that is the structure of the uh, drugs but most of the times it will be some other application related ones okay and then in from physiology you can uh, expect around 10 or hardly 20 questions okay not more than that so most of the times they will ask you about the basic definitions Sometimes they will ask you the basic definition of the dyspnea. What is dyspnea? That is shortness of breath. Okay. And sometimes they may ask you that what happens in case of the right side heart failure. Okay. And what happens in case of the left side heart failure. Okay. And uh, they will give you the options and they will ask you that among the following options, which is an autoimmune disorder. Okay. So such a type of questions will be asked from the physiology part okay and then the next one the main uh, role or the major role which is played in the paper one will be the pharmacology okay. so from pharmacology you can expect around uh, 50 to 60 questions only from the pharmacology okay and the type of questions in pharmacology you can uh, expect like the basic mechanism of action the drug mechanism of action or you can expect around the uh, drug therapeutic uses they may ask you about the therapeutic use or contraindications or indications 
okay and so on so and like in paper one at the end you will be uh, getting one case scenario at least one but sometimes you may also uh, get two cases okay so uh, at the end of the paper one there will be one or two cases and uh, sorry guys can you please turn off your microphones yes done so at the end of the uh, paper one you can get one or two case scenarios so and each case scenario will be related or it contains three or four mcqs okay so just you need to briefly go through the case okay you need to read the case and then you need to answer the questions related to the case okay and all the questions in uh, caps examination they are standalone questions okay even in the case uh, whatever the questions that are asked related to the case scenario they are all standalone questions okay it means that even if you make the mistake in the first question which is related to the case okay? so and if you do the second question or the third question which are correct okay? so you will get the score for the second and the third question okay so you won't get any negative mark as you have done the first question as incorrect okay so they all are standalone questions and the other advantage in the caps examination is that there is no negative marking okay so there is no negative marking it means that you can attempt all the 100 mcqs okay so there won't be any negative marking either in paper one or in paper two so there will be 100 uh, mcqs in paper one okay and when once the moment when you finish the paper one okay you will be having a one hour break and after one hour break you will uh, need to appear for the paper two and this is the overview of the paper two so in paper two 